These are five career killers for cybersecurity. So I know the title sounds very serious, but I would like to start off with the point that your career is your own and you don't have to do the things that I mentioned in this video to have a good career. These are just some of the things I noticed that have really benefited the mentors that I've had, the colleagues that I've had, and just teammates in general that have done these things and been able to grow very successfully in their careers in cybersecurity. And for those of you who are new to my channel, hi, my name is Sandra, and I currently work as a cybersecurity analyst, and I have about four years of experience, and I have a bunch of other videos specifically for cybersecurity careers on my channel if you're interested. I think one of the things that a lot of people tend to not do or forget to do is keeping up with cybersecurity news and trends. So working in cybersecurity, one of the most important things that is going to be important to your growth and the benefit that you bring to your team and your company is keeping up with cybersecurity news, whether they be alerts, cybersecurity blogs, hacker news, the latest exploits that attackers are taking advantage of. Basically, all these things change on a weekly basis and keeping up with cybersecurity news and trends can definitely be one of your key success factors going into your cybersecurity career. For example, let's say you're someone who regularly reads cybersecurity news and one morning you wake up and you see an article of a specific vendor that your company uses and they recently had a security incident or a data breach and maybe your company isn't big enough to have a dedicated threat intelligence team or a dedicated team that constantly keeps up with cybersecurity news and trends. So you're the one to bring this up to your manager or the executives or whoever makes decisions about, about what to fix and then you spin up an incident. This is what I mean by being able to grow in your career and being able to use just keeping up with current events in cybersecurity as one of your, I guess, quote unquote superpowers when it comes to keeping your company and your products secure. And I'm not saying that you have to endlessly scroll cybersecurity news every single day. You can set up alerts to your phone based on cybersecurity blogs that you like or maybe alerts from official organizations. And I'll list a few of the cybersecurity blogs that I personally follow. And another thing that I do is, is I put all of my blogs into an RSS feed. And it sounds really old school, but trust me, it's actually they've actually modernized rss feeds you can use a tool like feedly and basically you can just consolidate all your blogs into one place which is what i do so if you're originally going to check 10 sources of information then you can compile all of that into feedly or whatever rss feed uh, aggregator that you're using and then you can view all of them at the same place which makes it a whole lot easier because it also is smart enough to help bubble up information to the top so that you're able to read the more important articles that have more eyes on it or more views which typically means more shares or it's more relevant or it may be more important and I do have my OPML file for Feedly if you guys want to use that directly so that you don't have to find your own sources. It is linked in my Patreon, which is down below, but this specific file is not behind a paywall. So if you just scroll down into my Patreon, I believe you'll just be able to see it and download it. And then you can import it into your Feedly app. I just use iOS version, but I believe there's also a desktop version. So hopefully that helps make things easier for you when it comes to cybersecurity news and it isn't as daunting as, you know, having to spend like 30 minutes, an hour just checking through things, even just reading through the headlines, seeing what's seeing what catches your eye, seeing what pops up, seeing if there's anything relevant to you, which of course is the most important. The next mistake is not learning new cybersecurity skills. So I do want to preface this with the fact that your career is going to be is going to be full of ebbs and flows. So maybe in your early career you're learning as much as possible and you're kind of like scaling upwards and then eventually when you head towards your mid-career, maybe you have more personal life things are going on, maybe you're having a kid, maybe you're buying a house, then maybe your career kind of like plateaus a little bit, maybe it goes down a little bit, maybe you just won't have as much time to spend at work and learning new skills outside of work hours, which makes sense. But you're always going to have those ebbs and flows in your career, and I don't expect everyone to always be learning new skills every single day all the time. This is obviously just depending on where you're at in your career and how and what trajectory that you're going for. And if you're someone who is at your job for you know five ten years and you really enjoy what you do and you like it and you have good work-life balance and you're paid fairly and you're treated well then i'm not saying that you have to learn a new skill to get a new job but it's more so just for your personal development if you're someone who is interested in picking up those new skills because even if it's not directly tied to your professional growth i do think that there's something to say about i would say like the maybe the color that it brings to your day to day if you're just at work and maybe you've completed your task then instead of being bored you could pick up a skill every once in a while not that you have to watch a course download a new app and play with it every single day again but i have noticed that out of my mentors and colleagues that have been just really good at their jobs and 
basically the people that you go to for advice for certain things or insight into a specific area they're typically the ones that are very good at learning and personally i'm not someone who is like a natural learner i don't pick things up really quickly i think personally for me it takes time to absorb information and I kind of have a slower pace of learning, but that obviously doesn't mean that I won't try. So I think just keeping that in mind is going to be really helpful for your career. For example, if there's just something in, for example, if you're just going through cybersecurity news and you see this new tool that's up and coming that sounds really interesting, maybe it's open source or maybe they have a free community edition, then maybe you can just download it, see what it does. Obviously use test information and do it in a secure environment, but you know, just test it out. And even something as simple as that could be could be fun to kind of tinker around with and also be able to grow that learning muscle that you have. Because it's not just about learning the skills, it's also just about it's also just about practicing that muscle to be able to learn new skills and pick up new things. So that when the time comes, maybe when your company does import a new tool or a new app, then it'll be a lot easier for you to kind of pick that up and and figure out what to do with it so that you're more comfortable picking up new skills or new tools or whatever it is that your team would be onboarding. The next thing is not getting new certifications. So this is something that will highly depend on the job that you go into. For example, if you're not in cybersecurity, no one's going to ask a software engineer for a certification, you know? Um, no one's going to ask for whether or not you completed a coding course or, or anything else. It's really, I've noticed that cybersecurity is just very heavy in certifications. And it's not to say that, it's not to say that you can't get a more senior role if you don't have a specific certification, but it definitely would be helpful. For example, I know people with 20 plus years of experience and they're doing great at their jobs and they don't have a single certification, but I also know people who have similar years of experience and do have a certification. So it definitely depends on the types of roles that you're going for. And I think this is the most beneficial for people who are switching jobs because for example, if you're currently working on a red team, for example, and maybe you don't have any certifications, but you have that experience, but when you're going on the job market and looking for new jobs whether it's a higher promotion or a higher title maybe they're asking for a ceh or an oscp certification but even if you have the skills to do the job they may still have a preferred qualification of that certification and if you're able to get it then it's definitely going to help you in terms of a higher salary in terms of better job prospects and just overall an easier time navigating the job market compared to someone who may just have those years of experience but may not have a certification that may also be going up against other candidates in cybersecurity going for that same role that may have certifications. So, so that's what I mean by being able to grow your career or getting more certifications. I'm not saying that it's required, but it's definitely going to be but it's definitely going to be very helpful for you, especially because cybersecurity probably the field in tech with the most emphasis on certifications maybe outside of cloud. There's definitely a lot of cloud certifications out there for, for Azure, GCP, etc. So as you're kind of charting out your career path, definitely keep in mind what certifications that you could get at what point, especially if there's a specific area that you want to go into in cybersecurity. There's certifications for most things, to be honest, whether it's digital forensics, security auditing, red teaming, ethical hacking, a lot of certifications out there for cybersecurity. So I would definitely do some research on that. But I do have a few videos on on the cybersecurity certifications to get, and I'll link those down in my description if you guys want to check that out. The next thing is not networking or having mentors slash mentees. So you probably hear this pretty often, but I really think that networking is one of the most important things to do when you are working in any field to be honest. And I definitely do think that I did a lot more of this when I was in college and, and in my early career where I was going to conferences more, where I was just meeting new people all the time. And maybe I was going to recruiting events and just meeting recruiters as well as people who already work in a specific role that I wanna go into. But networking is actually how I got my first internship for the software engineering program at JP Morgan Chase, as well as my first cybersecurity job out of college. Not to mention the many, many mentors that I've had along the way to get me to where I am today. Um, I really do think that it's very, very important to your career to have mentors, not just because, you know, you think that they have a cool job, but also because they're able to give you advice for things that go on on a regular day-to-day -day basis. For example, when it came to questions about career growth, um, what I should do in certain scenarios, um, bringing up certain things I wanted to learn or work on. My mentors have been the ones, not always my manager. And I want to point that out. It's not always your manager who is being able to have certain knowledge or expertise in a specific area to give you advice on certain things. And that's why you have mentors in different areas to give you advice on what to do when XYZ happens, or if you want to learn XYZ skill and you have a mentor that is specifically on the red team or any other team that you want to go into, then you know it just becomes so much easier because They've been there, they've done that. And it also just helps being able to learn from multiple different sources, not just one person or from one specific area of cybersecurity or tech. 
and of course being able to mentor somebody else even if you're a first year graduate of college or boot camp and you just started your first job i still believe that you have resources and information and guidance that you could share to someone else even just two or three years behind you whether they're a college student a current boot camp student maybe a high school student even or maybe they're just trying to get into the area that you are in you can learn so much by mentoring someone just as much as you can learn from having a mentor and you could also volunteer directly with mentorship programs a lot of universities and schools bootcamp programs as well as as well as companies have this we can volunteer to be matched with a mentee and be able to share your experience give any advice uh, just provide input and it really does go a long way i really do think that some of the most fulfilling work that i've done is through volunteer programs and mentoring through different initiatives through college and and my workplace and the last career killer this word sounds really negative but it just sounded cool for the title so apologies for anyone who doesn't like this specific term but the last thing is not switching roles or asking for a promotion so i personally think that it is beneficial for your career to switch jobs every few years or so at least in your early to mid career i also think that if you're someone who likes your company likes your team is already in you know your quote unquote dream job then you don't have to go and apply for a new company if you don't want to even if it's even if it's for a salary bump but what you should be doing instead is asking for promotions making sure that conversation is open with your manager making sure they know that it's something that you want and want to work towards because if your manager doesn't know and and you end up at your year end review with you know just really good ratings but no sign of any promotion or no path to a promotion because typically in corporate you can't just ask for a promotion and get it there's usually a promotion cycle there's usually times within the year that promotions happen or are given so you always want to make sure that you're aligning your path and your timeline with what your company has set out and none of that can happen without a conversation with your manager um, it should be open and do you think that's one of those things that you kind of have to get comfortable talking about it's not always the easiest advocating for yourself or talking about what you've accomplished or or why you're ready or or why you deserve to want to go for this next step but if you don't do this you may find that a few years in you may not be at the level that you want to be or making an increased salary like you want to and that could just lead to frustration in itself so we just make it a lot easier for yourself your manager your skip levels your company to be able to know what you want and be able to align those goals with the company values and, and what their goals are then it becomes a whole lot easier to set up that case for for what your promotion cycle and what your promotion path is going to look like or of course looking for a new job and getting a salary increase or a job title promotion through that path is, is also a viable option but it all just depends on what you're looking for in your career i'm not saying that you have to quit after a certain amount of time to look for a new job or to ask your promotion exactly when you're into your job it really is up to you but i do think that at least being being conscious of it and and kind of taking your career into your own hands rather than waiting for a promotion to fall into your lap or or waiting for a job offer if you're looking to switch jobs that typically doesn't happen so i wouldn't wait for it i would really just take action for yourself and go from there all right so that's it for this video hopefully this was helpful in some way let me know in the comments below if there's any other video topics that you guys would like to hear thank you guys so so much for watching and i do have a course on how to get your first job in cybersecurity all details linked in my description below and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications i post videos every wednesdays and sundays at 12 pm and hopefully i'll see you guys in my next video bye